I'm working on this wedding commission and there's this giant gaping hole in my wood. And typically I work these blemishes into my finished design, but it's just too thick to work into the lettering this time. So I'm going to show you how I fill these holes so I can continue to use these wood pieces in my pyrography projects. So I already sanded inside of the hole and then I used a rag to wipe out any sanding dust that was still there. And now I am using a Minwax stainable wood filler and I'm going to push this into the hole to fill up the space. And I'm gonna push it in so that it's a little bit raised, but I don't want it coming outside of the hole at all. So nothing outside the edges, but a little bit tall. And that will allow me to be able to sand it down but I need to make sure that it actually goes down deep enough into that hole. I know that you can use a putty knife and had I done this before I did the burn, I would have just poured this in and used a putty knife. But here I'm trying to be very careful not to scrape it across the rest of the burn. So I do recommend if you're going to do this, do it before you burn and then go ahead and burn after it has already dried. In this case, since it didn't go into the design as well as I thought and then I went around it, it still was too much of an eyesore, I'm going to go ahead and fill it. So you can see that either side of this was very deep. In the middle it was actually a little bit raised and so I didn't bother to fill in the middle part. And you can see here that I am scraping off the sides that came outside of the area. That way I don't have quite so much of a blemish. It blends into the wood better when you do it this way. And since I didn't have to fill that middle part, that's less that I have to burn again. And I only have that one side. And then I go over it with this little card. You can also use a putty knife, but it's basically to really push that wood filler down into the hole and to scrape off any excess off the top. And then you let it dry for about two hours. Once it is finished, then it is time to sand it down again. So I'm going to grab my sandpaper and I'm going to make sure that I make this level with the wood. Again, I left it just a little bit high so that I could sand it level to the wood once it was dry. And then I am going to carefully sand over both sides of this. I'm trying to be careful not to sand off the burn, but I've already sanded some off. So I'm just gonna have to go back in and touch those up in the end. Once you have the repair sanded down to the level of your wood, then it's time to just wipe off all that sanding dust and fine tune it. We are going to burn back over all of those burns that got sanded off, including the part that we covered up with the wood filler. And you're gonna see that there is sap underneath that wood filler that when it got hot, it burned and it came up underneath. So as I'm burning, you'll see this little spot show up and I want that gone. So I'm gonna just use a razor blade and very gently scrape that away. Using a razor blade is a really great way to scrape away those mistakes or basically erase, right? You don't have an eraser with wood burning because it is so unforgiving, but a razor blade does a fairly good job if you are very gentle and you scrape in the direction of the wood or you just scrape off those tiny little pieces. Once you are done scraping off the blemish, come back in and touch up any little parts that needed some touch up with wood burning. Now when I am burning a smoky piece of wood or I'm burning over things like wood filler, which I don't do very often, I definitely want to have my fume extractor or smoke absorber. And if you don't have one of those, then make sure that you get a fan and then turn it on, but face it away from you so that it does not cool off your wood burning nib, but it still pulls those fumes away from your face and the smoke away from your face 
But if you can, I highly recommend getting a fume extractor or a smoke absorber. This particular one is one that a lot of people use for soldering iron work and it's really, really good. They come with carbon filters and that helps to filter out any smoke in the, in the room. So I highly recommend that. Once you have finished burning, then it's time to go ahead and clean up your space and get it ready for staining. Simply wipe off any of that sanding dust that was still left and then get out your stain. Now I'm using two different kinds of stain and you can see that with this lighter stain, the wood filler blends in very nicely. And that's one of the big reasons why you wanna make sure that your wood filler stays inside the blemish and doesn't really blend out too much because you don't want it to show up. With the darker stain, it does show more. So that's something to keep in mind when you are filling in these holes. Follow the instructions on your staining packet for how long to let this dry before you seal it, but then go ahead and seal it so that your wood filler stays in place you will see here you can still see it but it's not very noticeable when you back up so if you don't know it's there already then you might not notice it's there at all if this was helpful you probably love my pyrography courses head on over to burnsavvyacademy.com to see what is available but before you go remember to like and subscribe and then hit the bell notification so you never miss a video from me and I'll see you on the inside. Later, Pyro.